Welcome to the campfire. Today, we are taking a deep dive into District 26A. The teams in this district are Austin, Bush, Clements, Dulles, Elkins, Hightower, Ridge Point, Travis, and George Ranch. Let's start off by analyzing these teams in our film session. When you talk about 26A, you got to start with the Ridge Point Panthers. They've won district championships eight out of the last nine years, and they are primed to do it again in 2023. Their offense is in great shape with dual threat Austin Carlisle returning behind center, and he has two FBS receivers in Mason Dossett and Ashton Bethel Roman. Defense will be young, and that could be a problem when they face Hightower. The Hurricanes have ridiculous offensive talent as well. Reigning offensive MVP Joseph Stewart is back at quarterback, and he has his weapons too. Wide receiver Zion Kearney and running back Jeremy Payne will be playing Division I college football in 2024, but will be leading Hightower this fall. Travis may have the most experience coming back as they return 15 starters, including linebacker Thomason Olurunifimi. George Ranch was a playoff team in 2022, and they have running back Jaden Shelton looking to repeat as a first-team all-district selection. Clements found themselves in the postseason last year, and Gunnar Chenier will bring steady play at the quarterback position. Bush always has speedsters on the roster, but this year the Broncos will look to big Caleb Fountain to shut down the opponent's running game. Tight end Victor Adarungboye is a first-team all-district performer for Dulles as the Vikings try to make a playoff push. Elkins and Austin combined for one district win in 2022, so they will look to improve in the win column this fall. Players on the Rise is brought to you by Parker University. Do you or your student want a career training the world's best athletes? Check out our bachelor's degree in strength and human performance today. For an even deeper look at 26A, here's producer Ward Fasold and the Houston Chronicle's John Poorman with the District Breakdown. All right, District Breakdown time, 26A. We're talking, and we're talking with John Poorman from the Houston Chronicle. John, we talked about the Katy District last week and how Katy always makes the playoffs. Bridge Point always seems to win that district as well in 26A. But I don't think the gap between them and Hightower, I'm no, again, last year I said I wasn't dumb, or last week I said I wasn't dumb. I'm not going to pick against Ridge Point winning the district title. But, man, Hightower is right there, and they probably have two of the at least top five athletes in that district, if not the state, with Dallas Payne and, and Zion Kearney. Yeah, I mean, you know, you look at what Ridge Point has done historically over – you know, the past decade, and it's just winning, winning, and more winning, um, you know, and, and since Coach Rick Favors has taken over this program, they've continued to do so, piling up district titles. They were 8-0 in the district last year. Um, that was one game better than Hightower at 7-1. and one. Um, So, you know, I would expect more of the same. You know, last week I made the bold prediction that the Katy Tigers would make the playoffs. Right. Well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go out on another one and say that Ridge Point is gonna get back in the playoffs in 2023. Uh, obviously, they they've got to be the uh, uh, the district title favorite. Uh, High Tower, though, as you mentioned, they've got a lot of great athletes. Uh, Jeremy Payne is an outstanding running back. They have a, a returning quarterback in JoJo Stewart and uh, Oklahoma uh, uh, commit and Zion Kearney at wide receiver. So they have plenty of firepower. And I would expect this district title to come down to those two teams once again this year. Absolutely. All right, we're moving down to 21-6A next week. You know who we're going to talk about there. And you know who we won't talk about, which is John Kay, because he's moved on to Rice. So uh, let's get your thoughts on the new head coach there at North Shore, and we'll talk 21-6A next week. Sounds good. We'll post the entire breakdown segment this Wednesday on our social media pages. Now let's take a look at some game changers and our Players on the Rise presented by Parker University. This district has a plethora of skill position players, including high tower receiver Zion Kearney. Last year, Kearney had 39 catches for 765 yards and eight touchdowns for a Hurricanes team that reached the regional semifinals. Zion was a unanimous selection as first team all district as he uses his 6'2 height to go get the pigskin in the air. Kearney has verbally committed to Oklahoma. Ridge Point's Ashton Bethel Roman is a matchup problem for defensive backs in this district. Ashton is the type of receiver who can not only take the top off defenses, but slide into the slot as well. 
He caught 37 balls for 890 yards and eight touchdowns and often turned bad passes into great catches. Ashton verbally committed to Arkansas last week. Arguably the best running back in 26A is Jeremy Payne out of Hightower. Payne rushed for just over 1,000 yards and 13 touchdowns last year and also caught 17 passes for three more scores. Jeremy is an explosive and versatile big play back who won't be run down once he gets past you. The unanimous first team all district selection verbally committed to TCU. Find a spot on the field for Ridge Point's Mason Dossett and he'll excel at it. Mason caught 46 passes for 660 yards and four touchdowns as a receiver. He also played quarterback for the Panthers where he managed to get an interception. Mason is also used in special teams where he averaged over 25 yards of return on kickoffs, including a 100 yard touchdown. Mason is verbally committed to the Baylor Bears. Players on the Rise is brought to you by Parker University. Check out our bachelor's degree in strength and human performance today. Our Ward Fasol cut up to a head coach in this district to talk about his team and the rest of 26A in our Media Day segment. All right, it is Media Day, and we are talking 26A with Fort Boyd. Fort Ben Dallas, new head coach, uh, Bill Gary. Coach, talk about getting this job kind of late in the season, but it, it, it is a team that you're familiar with because you have spent some time here as an assistant. Talk about how that all played out and how you ended up getting this job as the Vikings' new head coach. Well, I, uh, you know, I, I was excited for the opportunity. It's, it's been a long, you know, long time dream of mine to be a head coach. Um, you know, I'm, I'm 30 years in the game in, as an assistant in various capacities as, as coordinators and at uh, a number of stops. And uh, as you mentioned, I do have some familiarity with Fort Bend ISD, uh, having, having worked at, uh, at Clements, at Dulles and at Ridge Point for, uh, you know, close to two decades. Um, I spent a, a good deal of time at Dulles uh, in the past and uh, worked under Jim Creech and uh, have, have familiarity with the traditions and, you know, what it means to the community when, when things are going well uh, and, and the importance that the athletic program and in football in particular can, can you know, bring to the school community. Um, but, you know, as far as, you know, coming from outside in, most recently coming from Seven Lakes High School, and, and Katie, um, you know, district has changed, but there's a lot of there's a lot of things that uh, I, I would say uh, are still in place. Um, there's a lot of you know the X's and O's are going to change. The you know the the various head coaches and the programs that they've tried to uh, uh, instill at, at their respective schools. Some of that has changed, but uh, you know football still football. You know the dimensions of the field haven't changed. Um, style of play is going to be largely dictated, uh, you know, by the kids that we have. But I think my my interest in, in coming back home to Dulles, uh, I you know, was largely tied to you know I feel a connection to the to the school community. I, I feel like uh, I know what uh, what kind of things you know uh, are necessary to 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 put the program back on track. That's awesome. And again, thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you in the fall. All right. Thank you so much. You can catch the entire interview Friday on our social media channels. That's going to do it for this week's campfire. Next week, we dive into 21-6A and find out how perennial state contender North Shore will fare with a new head coach. Until then, have a great week, everybody.